and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully you don't hear my cats meowing in the background. <laughs> in today's video, I want to talk about my ulcerative colitis and what that looks like. <laughs> IBD stands for inflammatory bowel disease. This is just chronic inflammation of the digestive tract. It includes ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis is the inflammation um, and sores or ulcers within the lining of the digestive tract. Um, and it's found in the large intestines, which is your colon and the rectum. Crohn's disease, on the other hand, is the inflammation of the digestive tract, and it can be found anywhere from throat to anus. So that's a little bit of the difference. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 2012, um, even though I had experienced my very first flare-up earlier that year. So in March, I started having flare-up symptoms. I had no idea what they were. Um, I ended up in the ER twice because of dehydration. I ended up seeing a gastro doctor that the ER had just mentioned. They listed a couple of doctors. I saw one and we did some things like, it's all blurry to me. I was 22 at the time. It's all a blur, but my symptoms actually got better on their own. It was a weird mystery. So forward to the fall of 2012, I started experiencing those symptoms again and I knew whatever it was, it was back. I ended up seeing my PCP from back home who he had known me since I was a kid and he knew something was up with my gut and he ended up getting me in to see a gastro doctor there back home and he was one of my favorite gastro doctors. He immediately knew something was up. He suspected ulcerative colitis. Um, however, you can't diagnose it without having a colonoscopy. That is how it's diagnosed. So he actually got me worked in for my very first colonoscopy. At this point, I was 23 years old. And um, it was, it was all a blur, y'all. I had my first colonoscopy, and I was diagnosed with severe ulcerative colitis. There's different types of ulcerative colitis. Um, the type that I have is pancolitis, and that means it's the whole colon. So kind of like this picture on my shirt. The whole colon is covered in ulcers. Some people may experience certain parts where when they get inflammation, it's just maybe the lower half, up to here, kind of thing. So there can be different types of ulcerative colitis. Um, I was going to start on two medications. I was gonna be prescribed azathioprine, which is also known as imurin, and balsalazide, which is also known as colazole. So those were gonna be my treatment. I was also gonna start on prednisone, which is steroid medication, to calm down the inflammation. That was not gonna be a long-term medication. It was just gonna calm down the inflammation and then I'd get weaned off, but the other medications were gonna be my maintenance medication essentially. But <laughs> my body likes to freak out and shortly after that, like within a day or two, I started throwing up and I wasn't able to keep anything down. So my gastroenterologist, he admitted me to the hospital for fluids and just to get things to calm down. Um, I was probably there for about a week. Things finally started to get better and then I went home. Over time, um, things calmed down. I started to wean off the prednisone and I did pretty well for probably about a year and a half on just the balsalazide and the azathioprine medication. However, <laughs> I had a freak accident <laughs> where a 20 ounce 
can of tomatoes fell directly on my big toe, y'all. I thought I had died. I thought I broke my toe. Didn't break my toe. However, <laughs> eventually part of the nail fell off and the nail started to grow at a weird angle and it caused an ingrown toenail. So all of this to say, I started having issues with an ingrown toenail and it getting infected because of this can falling on it. So I was put on antibiotics. And I just remember I took a couple of rounds of just like a lower antibiotic. It wasn't helping. Um, so my doctor prescribed a heavy heater type of antibiotic called uh, clindamycin. It worked, y'all. However, it gave me C. diff, which is Clostridium difficile, and it's like being in a flare-up. I mean, it really messes with your gut. You have diarrhea. Um, it wasn't fun. I thought I was having a flare-up. When we did some tests, it, I was just positive for Clostridium difficile. The only way to get rid of this is with an antibiotic which is funny because I got it from an antibiotic. There's two types that they'll prescribe you. Um, one, the first one that they'll start with is called Flagyl. It's also known as Metronidazole. I actually did a couple rounds of that and it didn't kick the C. diff. So then they moved up to the heavy hitter version, which is Vancomycin. And it is very expensive. <laughs> I think I had to do two rounds of that as well. And it's only in a liquid form, if I remember. It has to be refrigerated. It did not taste good, y'all. Did not taste good. The problem, eventually the C. diff, I got rid of it. It took months. The problem was, while we were dealing with the C. diff, I actually was thrown into a real flare with my ulcer colitis. But my gastro doctor was like, we need to treat the C. diff and try to get rid of it all before we can then start treating your flare-up symptoms. Yet again, I ended up in the hospital um, a couple of times because per the usual for me, I get start getting sick and I'm unable to keep things down. So I'm, you know, losing fluids because the main symptom of ulcerative colitis flare-ups is diarrhea. So you're losing liquids one way and you're losing it the other way because I'm throwing up. So uh, yet again, was in the hospital. Um, things started to get a little bit better. Um, my doctor didn't want to prescribe me with steroids again. So to take care of the flare-up, I actually was prescribed a biologic medication called Humira. And it's kind of like the next tier up. A lot of times they'll start you on these pills um, and then they'll move up to biologics. So he still wanted me to take my regular medications, but we were gonna also add Humira to that to help the inflammation. So I was on Humira. Uh, it was an injection that I gave myself every other week, and I did that for about a year. I did notice, like several months into it, I could tell the Humira was working, and I could tell that my body was needing it, you know, closer towards injection time. I have pretty sensitive skin, and when you give yourself these injections, you can only give it in certain areas. So it's either your upper thighs or your abdominal area, but it's got to be a certain bit away from your belly button in a certain region. And a lot of times I would get, especially on my legs, like little welts um, shortly after I gave the medication. And maybe within a day, sometimes two days, it would go away. Um, I knowing now this was probably not a good symptom to be having but I thought this is the only symptom I've got I can deal with it it's fine however I'd say a good chunk of using Humira maybe six months in six to eight months in I started noticing I was having symptoms with my scalp and uh, my gastro doctor ended up referring me to a dermatologist and I was diagnosed with scalp psoriasis, which is a side effect of the Humira. There is a very long list of side effects for Humira. 
as with any medication. And I ended up getting scalp psoriasis, which was treated and I was pulled off the Humira because at that point, because of the side effects, I didn't want to be on it anymore. Um, and my body was doing okay. So for a while I was doing okay again, but I would get little flares that my gastro doctor would prescribe me prednisone and then I'd be okay. But I kept getting them frequent enough that I was like, I don't think my maintenance medications are working anymore. So we decided to try another biologic. So this time we were gonna get rid of those maintenance medications, the azathioprine and the balsalazide, and I was just gonna take this biologic called Intivio. Intivio is an infusion, and it's similar to Remicade infusions. Remicade is, um, from what my gastro doctor told me, is very similar to Humira. Because I failed with Humira, he didn't want to put me on Remicade. He was like, let's try Intivio. It was also the newer drug. Remicade had been around for a while. Um, a perk to being on Intivio, they're only 30 minute infusions. Remicade can take a couple of hours. So, love a short, shorter time span being somewhere. Um, so I ended up on Intivio infusions. I think I would get them every six weeks. I think that sounds about right. And I'd maybe be in the office for maybe an hour max, um, probably more like 40 minutes. It usually just took them the longest. They had to mix up the medication and let it sit for a little bit before they then loaded it for uh, me to have. And then once it got loaded in, it was 30 minutes from there. A lot of times I was very tired afterwards. Um, I don't know if that was a mix of the medication and then me just like being in a comfortable, relaxed state since you're sitting in very comfortable chairs while you're getting your infusion. Um, but it usually knocked me out where I had to take a nap and I am not someone who takes naps, y'all, unless I am very tired or very ill. So I did Intivio infusions for a year. Things were growing great until I started to experience flare-up symptoms. We tried steroids um, while I'm on my Intivio infusions, and unfortunately, they didn't work my body no longer responded to steroids. We tried a couple of other different medications and just nothing worked. I even tried um, these medicated enemas because when I had the col we did another colonoscopy um, and most of my inflammation was lower colon. So we tried some medicated enemas, they didn't work. I was just honestly, getting worse and worse but it was like a slow worse where a lot of times my flare-ups would be great to bad very fast this was just a slow going problem it wasn't great and at this point my gastro doctor was like surgery is probably your next option because there was one more biologic he was like we could try but he honestly didn't want to put me through it and he was like i honestly don't think it would work um you know for me at this point which was okay i was fully going into my appointment to suggest surgery to him <laughs> because i really wanted my colon out i was just so tired of having flare-ups and feeling sick and it's just not a fun feeling um, being in the hospital taking all this medication so I was honestly ready for surgery so that's kind of my journey with ulcerative colitis up until getting my surgery um, I do plan to do another video that actually just talks about just my surgery more about my bag um, life with the bag, but I just wanted to kind of talk about the timeline of my ulcerative colitis. Um, so for um, seven years, I had my inflamed colon <laughs> up until I had it removed. Just because I no longer have my colon doesn't mean 
I don't still experience ulcerative colitis symptoms. So a lot of times people see when you get your colon removed, when you have ulcerative colitis as a cure, because that is the affected part of the disease for you, is the colon and the rectum. However, there are still symptoms. There is technically no cure for Crohn's um, or ulcerative colitis. There's no cure. Even when you have your colon removed with ulcerative colitis, there are still symptoms and side effects that you can feel. I still get fatigue. I still get joint pain. I had a bone density scan done many years ago when I was dealing with my pesky colon and um, it read that I have osteopenia. It's not as bad as osteoporosis, but it means my bone density levels are not within the normal range. So they'll claim it as osteopenia because it's kind of in that in-between range. It's not as bad as osteoporosis, but it's not normal. So I have to deal with that as well. There's just several different things. I get tired easily, but my bloods are normal when I've had my levels checked. It's just all part of the disease. Um, so I hope sharing this brings a little bit um, light to the disease. This is all just my experience too. Um, like I said, this disease is not one fits all. It's just, it just varies because our bodies are so different. Um, so it's nice to sort of share with people because a lot of times you can have common symptoms as far as like the diarrhea, um, abdominal pain, colon cramping. I would get colon cramping really bad. I had acid reflux really bad with my ulcerative colitis. Um, when I had my colon, I actually had a prescription for um, acid reflux. Now that I've had my colon removed, I don't have it as bad, so I don't need to take that medication anymore. So I hope that this was informational to you. Um, like I said, I plan to do some more videos about my ostomy bag, um, a little bit more about IBD, since IBD um, Awareness Day is coming up. And if you're interested in any merch that I make in my Etsy shop, I do make some chronic illness related t-shirts like this t-shirt um, in which I designed this little fun colon guy. I do have some awesome related um, t-shirts as well. You can check out my Etsy shop. The link should be in the description below. Also, if you would like to follow me on social media, I post a lot about IBD, ulcerative colitis, my ostomy bag on my Instagram page, which is also Linzarella. So that should be linked below as well. And until then, I hope you stay safe and you are well, and I will see you in the next video.